We are building a model railroad from scratch during several short episodes. And so far we have built quite a lot. I can take the ICE2 for a test drive. And I can operate the signals digitally. And the first tunnel portals are built. So far everything looks very promising. Connected again from Göppingen is Mr. Kristich. Hello, I'm happy to be here. Hello there. You were not able to join me during most of the crafting. I got your help from afar. We spoke on the phone from time to time between the episodes and you gave me some valuable tips. But I managed well so far. I don't know if it was just luck that everything looks so good or if I did something right for a change. Um, I am still a bit worried about the tunnels. If the distance between the tunnel walls uh, and the tracks is okay. At the beginning I started with the ICE2 starter set and first I strictly followed the instructions. I laid out the tracks according to this track plan here and then I connected everything to the mobile station and the track connector box as described. And I followed your recommendation not to use this from my basement. Look here, what I found there, here we have a track extension set with many different metal tracks. You warned me and said, dear Mr. Pretorius, even if you find some metal tracks, do not use them. Well, uh, you could use them, but uh, the driving characteristics are very different compared to the C tracks. Uh, perhaps you can tell us a few more about this. The C track is the successor of the M track. And we can only recommend to use the C-Tracks, since all the locomotives that we develop now only have a maximum of driving safety if they are used on the C-Tracks. The M-Tracks are much rougher, and so are the turnouts. And if you have a fine modern machine, you might run into trouble if it passes over such a turnout. All right, and not to forget the optics. This here almost looks like real ballast. And I saw that you can buy additional ballast from different manufacturers. You can use that to fill out the space between the platform and the tracks. That way it will look very realistic. Uh, you could use ballast with the M-Track of course, uh, but the driving stability will be questionable when it comes to the power supply for the train. Isn't that right? That could be problematic. That's correct. Okay, so I followed the tips correctly. I also bought the extension set for that, the one with the dining car. I bought a railroad construction set from Noch. In this plan, it is explained in which way you have to lay out the routes. Uh, these are the wooden parts with the radius and the plastic pillars. It also contained a track plan and most of the tracks were already included in the ICE2 starter set. Uh, the tracks that I was missing were in the extension set with the dining car. We only had to buy some special tracks separately, like these transition parts, like the 64mm track. So that worked out great and everything is looking good so far. Uh, and I was rather skeptical with the tunnel portals, whether the trains would be able to fit through or not. But you gave me a great advice. Can you tell me this again, Mr. Kristic? I recommend to use a very long train. We do the exact same thing when we are building a railroad system. We always use a very long train. Take the longest train set you have in your collection. You use that one as measuring unit. You simply move it all around the system. That way you can check if everything fits and if all the red eye are correct. So you can make sure that you won't get stuck at a tunnel portal, a possible catenary or a signal. Now you can see a spot right here. It is a little tight here, but I can pass by. The same for the other side. It might get a bit tight here in the curve. Usually the signal is standing straight in the train station, but maybe I want my ICE to start breaking in the curve. So I might move the signal up ahead a little bit like here. Okay, let's check the tunnel portal. The train, respectively the dining car, fits through perfectly. And I also took the ICE for a test drive already. Let's take it for another test drive while I'm picking up the next component. And you have mentioned catenaries. I will pick up one to demonstrate it. But first I will start the ICE for a test drive over the railroad route. And I will turn on all the effects. The first tunnel was no problem, the first signal as well, second, third and fourth signal also no problem 
and the remaining tunnel portals were also no problem. The sound effects are very nice. I'll drive it back a little, uh, that way you can see more of the model railroad. It's a very critical point during the modeling process. If we start building the landscape and something is done wrong, we'll have serious troubles to fix that. Yes, that's correct. That's what I said. I want to finish the electronics before I continue working with the landscape. I have something planned for today, but I will need your help with that. I want to be able to digitally turn on and off the interior lighting and other smaller things that will be connected uh, to the lighting transformer with the mobile station. You told me before the show to get an M84 decoder. That's one right here. I have unpacked that one already. I showed it before when we talked about uh, signal decoders. So this M48, what is it good for? We call that a switch decoder, colloquially. You use it to switch currents. That's why it's called switch decoder. Just remember, the M84 switch decoder switches something on and, of course, off again. Okay, so I can connect it to the system. And usually I would use a wire for that brown and red and connect it to the current of the system. But then it will be supplied with power by the system, or is that correct? Yes, we do need a minimum voltage, a minimum power supply to operate the decoder. And we do that with the brown and red wires, so with the track current. Okay, I saw that there is a universal power supply unit. It contains an additional power pack, so what does it do? Can I supply the decoder with a separate current? Do I no longer have to connect the decoder to the track current then? That's a digital component and it is operated digitally with the mobile station. That is why it must be connected to the track current with the red-brown wires. And in this case, you draw the current from the system. So that's right, but I can connect a universal power supply unit and a switched mode power pack additionally. That way the decoder is supplied with power from this unit and I can save some current from my railroad system. Wonderful. I'm checking if I still have enough brown and red wire left. I found something similar at the hardware store. That's a twin strand. It has the same thickness as the wires from Merklin. I hope you forgive me that I'm using this instead. That way I have both wires in one. It is important that I connect that later to the system. For you at home, it is important that you can orientate yourself so that you always know which wire is brown, which wire is red and that you have connected everything to the power supply correctly. I open that one and peel off the insulation. Uh, I use the black one instead of brown and red will be red, so that's easy. Um, we built ourselves a ring circuit in one of the last episodes. That's a recommendation from you, Mr. Christich. So a ring or star-shaped circuit throughout the whole system. Uh, that way you have a good connection to the power all over the system. So the tracks here are well supplied. Now I take two plugs and connect these two wires. Uh, you are welcome to ask questions in the commentaries, by the way. So if you want to know anything about how this or that is done, just write it down in the commentaries. Mr. Christian and I will scroll through the commentaries and answer them after the show. So let's talk some more about this switch decoder. It turns on and off. Uh, you can use it for simple hobby signals or for sections that don't have light signals, but where the power is turned off. Uh, we have uh, tutorial videos for that on our Merklin YouTube channel as well. So I repeat, uh, you can simulate a signal with this decoder. That way you don't have to install one, but the train will stop anyway. The section will be cut off from the power supply, just like we did with the signals in the last episodes. That's a bit more complicated, but that's no problem. At the same time, if this decoder is capable for toggling signals from red to green, it should theoretically also be capable of switching a lamp. That's what I thought. And that's what I want to show you together with Mr. Christich. So what does switch a lamp means? What else apart from lamp can you switch with it? Well, we have many different galvanically isolated relays in this M84. They are free of any potential by default. 
So I have to apply electricity first and then I can turn on and off anything that is connected to electricity in any way. So a lamp, as you mentioned, is one option. You could also turn a permanent motor on and off. Or maybe you have a windmill that you want to be turning for a certain amount of time and then you want to turn it off. All of these things are possible with it. Wonderful. That means I'm perfectly prepared. I've bought something. Look at here. Uh, I have movable chicken on a farm. They will be moving in a circle any minute now. Here I have a tractor by Fendt. It has light effects. Here you can see this small yellow flashing light. I also have a movable wood chopper. Uh, I also saw a mill wheel, so that contains a permanent motor, which moves the wheel all the time. Uh, you could connect that as well. That's what you could use this decoder for, right? Yes. That way I will have some more motion on my railroad system. The nice thing is that the light doesn't have to be turned on all the time. I could probably turn on and off the lights in the train station. Okay, I listened to Mr. Christich. The decoder must be connected to the track current. I have a black and a red wire here in front of me coming over from the ring circuit. And that will be connected to the decoder. I pressed stop on the system. That way the power is off. Here I have a lot of different ports, but only one is red and one is brown here on the side. I checked the instructions. That's where the M84 must be connected. So the red wire will be connected to the red port and the in quotes wrong black wire from the red black twin strand will be connected to the brown part. Unscrew it first. All right. Now the decoder is already connected to the digital current. Um, when I unpack the decoder, it comes with a decoder address and the decoder has just like the signals, such a small mouse piano at the side. And with these tip switches, you can set the address by moving the switches up and down. So I'll check my mobile station to find an available address. I have connected many different pieces. I even used the nice signals with two addresses. So they use two addresses on my mobile station since you can also choose slow approach. So they not only flash red and green, but also yellow and white. So that's very nice looking. Now I take the mobile station and press the keyboard. I guess the decoder has the address number one by default. Uh, no, it doesn't have an address at all. With these buttons here on the left and on the right side, I can toggle the different buttons on the keyboard. So I'll try out the different addresses. Here we have uh, the different turnouts and here are the signals. Uh, if I remember right, number 10 is my last signal, but number 11 is connected as well. So number 12 is the next free address. Now I have to check how address number 12 is encoded. This decoder has four addresses at the same time, which can be operated with the mobile station. Uh, let's check in the manual what to do. All right, here is the description. Number 12 doesn't exist. Four addresses would be number 9 to 12 but I can use 13 to 16. I think no. Uh, 13 to 16 is already taken. 17 to 20 is still available. In that case, uh, the first and third dip switch must be turned up. First, I press the stop button on the mobile station. All right, first and third lever must be turned up. Right now, all of them are turned up. So I'll turn down all of them except number one and three. Um, what about number 10? Does it go up or down? In this case, it can stay down. That means we're using the digital Macklin Motorola protocol. That way we have 320 addresses available. We could use DCC. That way we would have much more addresses available. But in our case, that's unnecessary. Okay, so I will turn the number 10 down. Let's see if that works. Something is not working. I'll check the dip switch again. One and three must face up. If you change the code, always press the stop button first. Something is still wrong. Of course, I set the addresses for 17 to 20 and not uh, to the number 15 to 20. Uh, let's do this again. Okay, number one and three are turned up. The other ones are facing down. And number one and three encode for 17 to 20. 
All right, now it is working and you can see on the decoder it flashes red or green. I can turn on the red light and when I turn the red lights off, the green light automatically turns on. So if my chicken are moving on the landscape, it will be set to red. At the same time, something else will be stopped. And uh, the same goes to the other way around again. If the other thing is stopped, that thing would start moving again. That's what that red and green flashing means. You don't have to switch anything. Using the four addresses, I could connect eight smaller accessories without programming anything in the decoder. We also have a tutorial on the Merklin uh, YouTube channel for this uh, on how to program the decoder. Uh, then you could operate the accessories individual. The decoder would have eight addresses, then instead of four. So the addresses 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, that would be eight addresses for the eight accessories. Um, now we want to talk about the important part. Mr. Christich, I need your help now. I want to set the decoder now to be used with my lighting current. I have a station platform uh, light here. Uh, I unpacked this within the last episode and we also added a plug to it. Now I want to connect this platform light to the M48 decoder. What has to be connected to what? Very simple. A lamp usually has a brown and a yellow wire. The yellow wire is always the positive pole and has to be connected to the M84. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can take off the yellow plug and then I connect it to the M48. I press stop on the mobile station. I will use this first port. I connect it to the red one. So if the red light flashes, my platform light should shine. And where do I connect the brown wire? That has to be connected to the ground. So any kind of ground on the system. So not the light transformer? The light transformer would be okay as well. Okay, so both methods are okay? Ground is ground, but if you're using two different machines, I would connect it to the light transformer. Okay, so that's what I will do. I will get a plug and a socket and we will take a brown wire from the ring circuit for my light. So that's yellow and brown. Let me show you one more time. If I would connect my lamp here with the yellow and the brown wire, then it would be turned on permanently, just like my train station interior lighting. Here at the side, uh, that is also shining. It is connected the same way as this lamp. The yellow and brown wire are coming from our light transformer. We talked about that in one of our last episodes. In this case, I've connected the yellow wire to the decoder and the brown wire will be connected to my light power line to the ground, as you explained. You make me an electrician during the show. All right, I will peel off the insulation and now I connect the socket now. But after that, a wire must go back from the M48 to the light. Is that right? Otherwise, uh, there will be no connection to the lamp. Exactly. So, as I explained, we have four galvanically isolated relays and they are free of any potential by default. So, I have no electricity whatsoever. All we do is to digitally operate them. We have to connect the source that we want to operate with the M84. So, your yellow wire coming from your lighting transformer will be connected to the center of the relay. Every relay has three ports and you simply choose the one in the middle. Let me show you in the camera. That's the left side, that would be red. In the middle is a hole where I can connect it. And on the right side there is green. That means if I connect that wire to the middle, this decoder will direct the current either to the right side or to the left side. Is that right? That explanation is correct. All right. So the current will be directed to the left side or to the right side. So it either flashes red or green. Now I press stop and I hope nothing will explode. And we can see the lamp is shining. That was address number 17. And if I switch address number 17 to green, the lamp will go off and the green side starts to shine. Okay, let's take a second lantern to show you that either one of the two light shines. So I'll take a second platform light. We will need that later anyway. So I may as well unpack uh, that right now. So here are the yellow and the brown wires again. First, I'll stop again. Now I connect 
the other yellow wire to the right side, depending to which side of the M48 decoder the current will be directed. One of the lamps will shine. Um, the brown wire will be connected to the ground of the light again. I have one plug left and I connect it to the other socket. No need for a distribution strip right now. It's just for testing it. Uh, I will do that nicely until the next episode. So the plug is on the wire. You could connect the plug to the other plug at the side. Now we have the second lantern. One is hooked up to the right side. The other one is hooked up to the left side. And now, depending on which address I connect, either one of the two lights will shine. Of course, if both lights stand right next to each other, the result will look like a disco. That doesn't really make sense. And such a platform light is supposed to shine all the time. It's more fun if you combine that with movable figures. For example, this set here with movable chicken. I'll unpack them and it is not necessary to let the chicken cluck all the time. Uh, you can turn them off when the night falls, so when the platform lights or the lighting in the houses are turned on, the chicken have to sleep. Then the chicken run is turned off when the illumination in the house turns on. That's a typical either or circuit. I'll unpack that carefully and that's a good thing that we installed it now since the landscape is not finished yet. Here are all the parts. We need this turntable to let the chicken move around later on. So careful now. Alright, that's the base plate. That's where the chicken are sitting on. That will probably start moving soon. I will have to drill a hole for that. Let me show you that would be a good spot here, right beside the farm. We will drill a hole there later. I'll need a large drill. And here we have a red and brown wire. And there is, in this case, a resistance too. And now I will do the exact same thing again. I'll disconnect one of the lights from the decoder. I open this plug screw and attach the brown wire here. And in a second, my chicken run will have current diverted from the decoder. Let's see which light is the right one. You see it's cable spaghetti already. I will tidy that up later. I'll place this light aside now and I disconnect the second one. Alright, now I reconnect this one again to the address number 17. I want to demonstrate to you that the chicken starts to cluck when the lights turn off. And when the lights turn on, the chickens will stop. At night our chicken may sleep. Alright, we have connected the chicken and the light is shining. You see, the chicken are quiet. And now let's see if the chicken run works. I'll switch it to green and the chicken are moving. I hope you can see that, maybe a little bit. It's very cute and filigree how they are moving around. That means at daytime the chicken can move around on the chicken run and when the night falls, we turn off the lights and the chicken stop moving. Perfect, I will install that over there next to our farm. Thank you Mr. Christich, you were a great help to me today. Everything worked out fine. I'm very pleased with my experimental setup. I will build that in pretty now and if you want to perfect everything, then you can also program the decoder to use 8 addresses. But that's usually not necessary. When you unpack it, it is basically perfect as it is. There's one more thing I'd like to do. If you have time again in one of the next episode, Mr. Christich, uh, you can operate them at the back with a circuit track. I could build it in a way that when the train passes over this section, the chicken start moving at the same time, or I saw a figure with a small still organize. It's a woman doing a selfie using a flashlight. So when the train passes by, this woman stands at the train station and takes a selfie. That would be a very cute idea and that would be nice to combine. So every time a train passes over this track, the woman takes a selfie. We will explain that in the next episode in a way that even an absolute beginner can rebuild that. See you then and thank you Mr. Christich. It was great to have you here. Thank you. Goodbye.